Hi there, uh, I'm Steve and uh, this is Sailing Allison. I'm uh, going to embark on a thing that I've been avoiding for quite a while now, which is replacing the flexible coupling which goes between the engine and the propeller shaft. Uh, the reason that I have been avoiding it is that all the nuts and bolts uh, seem to be rusted solid. Uh, I had a uh, marine engineer come and look at it about a year ago and he just said, oh, well, we'll have to, you know, cut it all off with an angle grinder. And um, he said, well, as long as it's kind of still working OK, then you should probably leave it as it is and then only do it when you really need to. Well, now I really need to do it. And so what I have been doing is watching a lot of videos on YouTube about how you free up rusted in bolts. And I've got a plan of attack, uh, which I am going to do uh, over the next uh, few days and weeks, probably, knowing how long these things take. And so I thought I would show you my journey of discovery into freeing up rusted solid bolts. Uh, this is the flexible coupling. Um, the engine is uh, towards the bottom of the screen and uh, you can see the prop shaft going off uh, to the top of the screen. Uh, if you look, there's a bolt there and then you can see that's the kind of the rubber bit that the, uh, the bolt goes into. There's a nut on the back of that. And then, uh, so there's two bolts on this side and then on the back side, there are two bolts that go through the central bit of the cush, um, the flexible coupling, and then uh, they are terminated in nuts on the other side. So I've got to get four bolts out in all. This is the replacement uh, flexible coupling. So this is obviously just the middle bit. As you can see, you've got uh, these rubber bits here, which uh, provide the flexibility and the bolts must pass through them. So that's, that's what a new one, well, a replacement one anyway, looks like. So this is the thing that I've got to put in. All very exciting. And I assume what's happening is that these central bits on the old one are pulling out, probably because the rubber has perished. Now, I'm not expecting this to be an easy job, so uh, I'm going to take my time and try and get this right. So uh, the first thing that I'm going to do today is um, the YouTube videos that I've seen all say that you should have these hexagonal sockets, not the normal 12 pointed ones to try and get these uh, these type of seized uh, bolts and nuts off. So I'm going to measure up. Uh, how big the bolt is and see if I've got a hexagonal socket because most of my sockets are the normal 12 point ones and if I need one then I will obviously have to order one um, or two depending on the sizes and then the second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to whack a whole load of uh, penetrating oil in there and the other thing that I've got is uh, and this is again on the advice of uh, some of the videos that I've watched I've got some freeze spray so I'm going to uh, put some freeze spray on there see if I can crack that uh, you know the where the joint uh, the, the screw thread is rusted, rusted up and then get some uh, penetrating oil in there so that's my task for the day is just to kind of look at getting the right size of sockets for this and uh, getting that penetrating oil in there so that hopefully it'll start to work its magic. Oh yeah, this is day two of uh, replacing the, um, the flexible coupling. And uh, as you can tell from my attire, it's absolutely freezing. It's uh, nearly the middle of June and uh, it's more like uh, kind of early March. Uh, it's very cold, very wet outside. Here I am on the inside and I'm going to try to carry on getting these nuts off the flexible coupling. Uh, so yesterday I used both uh, the freeze spray, I'll just get it here. Um, here we go. 
So I've got this freeze spray, uh, that's the uh, Arctic Haze Crack It, and also uh, this penetrating oil, uh, the No Nonsense Penetrating Oil, and um, so I gave it a good go with the free spray, uh, whacked, whacked in the penetrating oil. Uh, today I'm going to do the same, but this time what I'm going to do is try and actually move the nuts. So uh, the nuts are on the back surface of the flexible coupling, which of course makes them a lot more difficult to get at. But um, I'm going to go have a go and see what happens. Okay, so that didn't exactly work. Um, <clears throat> but I, I think that I'm understanding the problem better. So uh, what I need to do is get like an extension pipe uh, so that I can get more purchase on the uh, spanner that I'm using. So I think I've got one that will fit at home. Uh, I'm going to look that out now. And uh, I'm going to divert onto something that's a lot easier to do, uh, which is uh, replacing a couple of the lights. Hi, uh, here we go. Welcome to Sailing Allison. We're now on day four of replacing the flexible coupling. Uh, I've had two days of trying the uh, the kind of gentle route of uh, I've been using the free spray, I've been using the penetrating oil and really not getting anywhere. So um, today I'm going to go for the brutal option, which is uh, cutting off the bolt head. Uh, hopefully uh, I can get at it and um, it'll take a while. But to be honest, I've been spending so, um, so much time on this already that um, I think that, you know, half an hour or something to cut a bolt head off is, is probably time well spent. So let's see how it goes. This is uh, replacing the flexible coupling at day five. Um, so I did have a go uh, a few days ago now at um, cutting the bolts off uh, with a junior hacksaw because that's all you can kind of get into the space. And if I had done it, kept doing it for hours, then I would have um, got through the bolts. But because of where it was, it was impossible to actually cut them straight. So I'd have ended up with like a little flange of the bolt still in place. So I've finally given up um, on doing it all by hand and have invested in an angle grinder. So here it is. Uh, I uh, measured it fairly carefully, uh, measured the space fairly carefully to make sure that it would fit into the space. Um, I've also got myself some uh, of these. These are fireproof matting that are used for welding and brazing and so on. I'm going to spread them around the area to make sure that the sparks don't uh, end up um, causing a fire. Um, which I think is relatively low risk anyway. You know, oil and diesel is not that flammable, but there is a risk there. So uh, it's best to uh, to be safe. And I've also got um, these uh, gloves. These are, uh, here we go, level five cut proof gloves. So um, these should... Uh, uh, protect me in case of uh, any kind of uh, slips. The other thing I've got, of course, is a face mask, and I'm going to make sure that my arms and so on are covered up. Let's see how it goes. So finally, I've got some. Uh, I've got some uh, progress here. When I tried to use the angle grinder, uh, it was just a nightmare because uh, you just can't see what you're doing at all. I can get the angle grinder in, um, but holding it in place, you just cannot see what's going on. So uh, in desperation, I started the engine up and I whacked it into reverse, increased the revs. And as you can see, what's happened is that the two parts of the uh, uh, of the coupling have pulled themselves apart. So at least now I've got uh, something that I can get at. Um, so uh, I'm going to see what this looks like now. Hi there, this is uh, Sailing Allison. It's day six, or is it day seven, of trying to replace the um, flexible coupling. 
Uh, I'm having another go now. So I spoke to another person who uh, owns a boat on the uh, just round where we are. Uh, so there's a small set of pontoons. And what he advised was that I cut diagonally across the nut and then use a chisel to split it. Now, he said it would take about 15 seconds to do with an angle grinder, but seeing as it's so terrifying to use the angle grinder in that uh, confined space, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do it by hand. Now, I've already started with it and it does appear that the nut is quite soft to cut through. So I've made good progress so far. So today I'm going to give it a really good go and hopefully I'll get that first nut off. Let's see how we do. So hopefully you can just about see the uh, the cut I've already made in the nut. Uh, it is just there, it's coming across there. So I'm gonna carry on, see if I can get that uh, a bit further around so it kind of breaks through this uh, outside edge and uh, hopefully then it will just split with the chisel. Uh, fortunately, uh, it's a lot easier to get at so before I was working on uh, this knot here uh, and that was like really almost impossible. So that's the bolt end, obviously. That was almost impossible to get at. But this, because of the angle, it's a lot easier to get at. So, uh, right, that's, uh, I'll see you in about another half an hour or so, see how far I've got. Hi there, here we go again. Um, I think that the last time I spoke uh, I was in the process of hacksawing through one of the nuts uh, and I think, you know, that was going pretty well because the nut was actually very soft. So it turned out that the nut was actually too soft and um, I, I cut a slot through it at a diagonal pretty well and pretty easily. But um, when I tried to, uh, to uh, split it with the, uh, the chisel, so chisel into the slot, hit it with a hammer, what ended up happening was that um, rather than the whole nut splitting, the top just bent. So the, the nut was so soft that it bent, which is extremely frustrating. Uh, so I've got about half of the nut off and the rest of it still won't budge. So I did a bit of thinking, did a bit of research and bought another tool. Here it is. So uh, this is a, uh, a copy of a Dremel. So they call them multi-tools, but everyone refers to them as Dremels because um, they uh, Dremel invented them. Uh, an actual Dremel is quite expensive, so uh, the copies are really, really cheap. So uh, I got this about a week ago. Had a go because they've got these like little cutting discs, uh, but the cutting discs are made of something like Rivita because uh, I broke two of them with no effort whatsoever. So um, I've actually had to buy some proper Dremel uh, cutting discs, uh, which I can show you. Uh, here they are uh, with the speed click system. And these apparently, according to YouTube, are a lot better. Um, this is the, uh, the copy Dremel with an actual Dremel cutting disc fitted using their speed click system which uh, to be honest, isn't that speedy. I suppose it's, I suppose it's better than um, screwing the, uh, the end in, which is how the other ones work. So I uh, just need to connect up some electricity now and we'll see how it goes. Finally, some success. Here it is. This is uh, the first knot out of four off. So as you can see, uh, what I had to do was uh, cut there across there i did a couple of cuts with the dremel which worked absolutely brilliantly and um, i finally got the first knot off only another three to go now <sighs> number two there we go so it's amazing what having the right tools does for you so just a straight cut across you can see i got kind of through the bolt it took me about well, i don't know it's probably about five minutes these um, Dremel cutting discs are excellent and uh, and then it was kind of a struggle to kind of get up to wind it off uh, but there we go that's uh, half the job done 
So I'm going to take a rest now. Hopefully tomorrow, uh, get the other two off and um, then uh, see what I can do about getting some proper stainless steel nuts and bolts and uh, replacing it all. <sighs> Signing off for now. Hi, uh, yet another day uh, working on the flexible coupling. So uh, yesterday I came down and um, I did some work and most of the work was kind of prep because uh, what happened is that the when I was trying to pull the, uh, the coupling out, um, it was covering up the nuts in the middle of the, uh, the flexible coupling so I couldn't even get at them to uh, kind of cut them off. Uh, I was rather hoping that um, they would just kind of come off without me having to cut them, but of course that was too much uh, to hope for. So um, yesterday I did uh, the first cut on uh, the third bolt and uh, that didn't move it. Today I've just done another cut on that third bolt and I've managed to get that off. So uh, so I've got three nuts down, uh, one to go now. I'll just give you a quick show of uh, where we are currently. So I use these two G cramps to cramp the flexible coupling back in place because uh, what's happening is that the rubber kind of pulls out and it's uh, too hard to just kind of push back in but you can do it with these G cramps. Um, I'll put a bit more of that um, penetrating oil on as well to try and make it a bit easy for myself. So uh, I think it's back to work with the cutters. Uh, with the cutting disc and uh, see if I can get that last nut off. Hello and welcome to uh, sailing or maybe it should be repairing Allison. After all of the struggle over the last couple of months I've got this, the flexible coupling, it's out. Uh, that's the old one and if I reach over here, this is the new one. So uh, the bolts came out uh, with quite a bit of struggle and basically I ended up um, sort of hammering on the, the free end of the bolt uh, up and down and then there was just enough uh, space behind the bolt head because these weren't screwed in, uh, uh, you know, they were actually just held in by uh, the rust. There's just enough space for me to get a cold chisel in, move it out and then uh, once the uh, the rust seal had been broken, then it was fairly easy to get them out. So here they are. These are the culprits. These are what's been causing me all of the trouble. And uh, took them to the local chandlery and he said that these are actually high tensile bolts and uh, would need to be replaced by similar kind. Uh, now, I had to think about this and um, you know, it's only a 15 horsepower engine. It's not really uh, push, putting a lot of power through those bolts. And to be honest, it was held together with um, zip ties for uh, about a year. Uh, so I think that um, stainless steel bolts will do the trick. So this is what I've bought. Here we go, 14 mil stainless steel bolt with uh, nylon thread lock nut on the end. So this should uh, give me, uh, uh, mean that it all stays in place and uh, um, yeah, we'll be up and running. The one thing I've done is I've, I've got the, these are like five mil longer than the old bolts. So it gives me a little bit more leeway in putting them in. Because what I noticed was with the old ones, there was really only just enough thread to get the uh, the nut onto the end of the bolt. And there's actually plenty of space. You don't need it to be that tight. Just gonna have a check to see that the bolts go through. I did measure them early and they came up, uh, the, the old bolts came exactly at 14 mil. So I've got these, these are for, um, I bought M4, M14 bolts. So, uh, and I measured them earlier and they, they're actually 13.7 um, mil. So they fit quite nicely. So it looks like this whole thing is uh, gonna be okay. One thing I noticed about the construction of this is that if you look at it, 
you've got like a metal cone there that goes into this, which is a rubber bushing. Um, and uh, then on the other side, you can see that it's flat. Uh, so one would have thought that you would put the bolt in from that way and attach to the flange on this side so that the rubber bushing is being pushed in. Now the old uh, one was actually fitted the other way round so that the bolt went in that way and then came out this side and obviously this is creating a, um, a bit of a um, potential issue in that it's going to tend to pull this cone out rather than push it in. So I'm going to see if it's possible to mount it the other way around. I'm not sure whether it is because these stick out quite a long way but I'm going to have a fit up and a play around and see um, whether uh, whether it does fit. It doesn't need to last forever this. Um, I think that the previous installation even fitted in that way round was there for a few years and eventually I want to change the engine for an electric motor anyway. So at that point obviously I'll change the way that the uh, flexible coupling works and probably buy a modern one. But I just want to see because I think it will be a better solution if I can fit it in the other way around. Here you can see that the, you've got two flanges, so one for the prop shaft, uh, the other is the engine drive shaft, and the new flexible coupling goes in the middle there. So I've just done a test fit and um, the bolts are very, very slightly too long. The reason I'm saying that they're too long is that uh, there's a kind of maximum gap between the two, uh, the, the back and the front plates. The, uh, so the one that's uh, attached to the, um, the prop shaft and the one that's attached to the drive shaft from the engine. And uh, I can't push the prop shaft any further back because the flange um, plate is actually uh, now uh, uh, touching the hull. Uh, they just uh, fit in. But I think if I take uh, five mil off the bolts, uh, each of the bolts, then it'll drop in really easily and then I'll be able to put it together. I did try uh, flipping it the other way round, but it, it just doesn't look like it will fit in that way at all. So it's got to be the wrong way round. So uh, I'm going to take the bolts back home, um, hacksaw off five mil, uh, redress the ends and uh, and then come back another day. But what that does mean is I can have some rum. Hello, it's another day. I've cut down the bolts that uh, are going to attach the, uh, the whole lot together uh, so that there's enough space for them to fit between the two flanges, between the drive shaft and the prop shaft. So uh, here we go. I cut down the bolts using a combination of um, my uh, Dremel and uh, the angle grinder. Uh, the angle grinder did definitely do a better job, but um, it does make the bolts rather hot. I think if I had a cutting disc instead of a grinding disc, it would have been a bit quicker. But um, yeah, I've, I've got there now and uh, I'm just going to do the whole assembly of everything. That's a lovely new and clean flexible coupling and lovely new and clean stainless steel bolts. So if I ever have to take this apart again, um, then it should be a lot easier um, because they won't all corrode together.